One of our favorite guests joining us in studio right now, Dr. Joe Congeni, Akron Children's Hospital Sports Medicine with us. Good to see you, Joe. Hey, Ray. Great being here. Okay, you're going to talk a little bit, what, about baseball? Yeah, you know, we see spring outside the window there. It's spring, and I believe that means the calendar says it's time to play baseball. Not always feel like it in Northeast Ohio, but the high school kids are playing, and they're in my office, and mm-hmm. I know I know you're a baseball guy, too. But with our with our professional team, it's really kind of a strange spring. Um, rather than getting scouting reports right now, I think one of the biggest things is finding out how our guys are rehabbing and getting a sports medicine report is maybe almost as important, considering some of the big keys. We got Frankie that we wonder how he's doing. We got Kipnis. Really, guys that I wonder that are even further down the rehab chain, Salazar, Cody Anderson, there's a bunch of guys, a lot of stories. And, you know, I think a few of those guys, Anderson, Salazar, if they could ever get right, maybe would help in the bullpen and other things. But but the guy I'm most intrigued with that I think might be able to really change the fortunes of the tribe the most would be the one-time phenom, Bradley Zimmer. And I want to kind of use his shoulder injury to illustrate to people about shoulder injuries and the difference between different types of shoulder injuries, if you don't mind, Ray. I want to go no, down that road. Yeah, yeah with, with Zimmer. Such a long time. People are just scratching their head. Oh, my gosh, Zimmer is, you know, he was out for, what, eight months, 12 months, maybe more than that, not going to be ready to start the season, rehabbing. Of course, they always tell us rehab's going well, but who really knows until he gets out there? You know, Big difference between Zimmer, what Zimmer has is a lot like what we went through a couple years ago with Michael Brantley. Not so much like the two star pitchers that are struggling right now, like Severino and um, Clayton Kershaw. Those are from throwing repetitively over and over again. But the injury that, that Zimmer has that makes it more significant and whether he'll ever be able to come back all the way, it's a structural injury. That labrum that holds the ball on the golf tee, the ligaments that hold the ball stable, the shoulder stable, it was you know, torn and stretched, and as this is a stability injury, and he just didn't have any pop at all last year. And you know, these guys take a hit for it. He was hitting 203, he was hitting in the 100s when they finally said, Hey, rehab's not getting it there, and he's going to have to have this more major surgery. Remember how weak Michael Brantley was when he was trying to hit yeah. the ball in that one playoff, and he just didn't have stability, so they stabilized the shoulder surgically. Different than the kind of thing you have with overthrowing with Severino and Clayton Kershaw. Stabilize so they fix the labrum, they tighten up the shoulder. When our short, our sports surgeons do this surgery on our football guys, it's very common in football and wrestling, they get an unstable shoulder. You can tighten that up surgically. If you over-tighten it a little bit, that doesn't hurt anything when you're tackling, blocking people, and wrestling people and things like that. If you over-tighten a baseball player, it can be a big problem. You can have some loss of range of motion, mm-hmm. You know, really affect the swing. If it's in the throwing arm, really affect the ability to throw if you tighten it up. So it's really, it's really one of those surgeries that hit or miss and this phenom a guy that i think if he was right by mid-season this year could really really help our team a lot and give us that boost if in that the arm thing gets tightened up does it ever loosen up to give more mobility? i mean it will loosen up some again but it's really part of reconstructing it and making that uh labrum tight again and everything so you it's, build it back up you have to build it back up you build it back up and of course you rehabilitate it after but that's a bigger deal than the overthrowing things the old rotator cuff and you know they're talking about injections for both severino and and clayton kershaw and hell they'll be back after after a month this thing is 12 months 14 months we will not know till midsummer and he gets back out there does he have the pop again can he drive the ball remember when you and i were watching brantley when he came back gosh after his surgery and it took a long time yeah. but last year he was driving the ball again that's big difference and again big difference depending on what sport you play i watched zimmer about a month ago out in arizona yeah. in the cage just ferocious in the batting cage and he you know, he was getting down talking to us. He said, I'm ready to go. He said, they're being slow with me. He said, but I am ready. But I think the Indians are being cautious with this because of the history that we've had. In or, you know, you can go back to Travis Hafner with that shoulder injury yeah. and then Brantley and now his. It you, seems you like do they want up. to bring him along rather slow. You have slow. to. You have to bring these around slow. Yeah, bringing Hafner up is exactly right. He went through the same thing. So, so 
we saw glimpses in 17 of what you know Bradley Zimmer could do mm-hmm. and what a shot in the arm for a baseball team. I mean, from the standpoint of you talk to five tool guys and he just looks so great and when he's driving the ball and running the way he does, you inject him into the lineup. That's the thing about baseball. People looking at us, yeah, we cut salary. Yeah, we had to lose some guys. Uh, yeah, it's a head scratcher on a couple, but it's the way it is. Uh, these guys, you know, listening to to Chernoff and Antonetti and I and your interviews and things with them, they're driven to make this team great. Well, one thing that would sure help them a lot is if that medical team, if that shoulder's fixed right. Now you got to give credit to those surgeons; it's not an easy thing. But if they tighten him up and it's just right, and he's got that pop back, I think he could be the kind of guy that could be a catalyst for this team. Joe, injuries quote in vogue. A few years back, we used to see a lot of these oblique injuries, yeah. especially with us. Remember right, right. CC and Cliff Lee and sure. we go on and on and on. Now it seems <clears throat> like these calf strains are all over the place, from Lonnie Chisinau to Francisco Lindor to Jason Kipnis. Is, is a calf strain, just educate me as best as you can, not being, I know you don't know the x-rays sure. on these guys, but is that an overuse injury? Is that a freakish turn how do you strain a calf? So the uh, you know it's an infectious problem, and we got to get that. It's contagious in the locker room. We got to no. I'm just <laughs> I, I'm just joking. You know that we went through also the pecs. Remember when you get the pecs mm-hmm. for a while? So these muscle injuries they are more common. These athletes are really at the cutting edge of being as strong as they possibly can as they build themselves up, and there just isn't much margin for error. And when they get into that overload of that muscle, so is it a cumulative overload? You know. In other words, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, and then they reach the straw that broke the camel's back and they fall off all the way? Or is it a one-time, it's a little bit of both? Those muscular injuries can be a little bit of both, and we're never really sure. But most of them, we believe, are probably cumulative. And as they work in the offseason to be as close to 100% in that muscle strength as they can be and those explosive muscles that are important for baseball, they're going to they're going to slip over the edge sometimes and get to the point of where they overload micro tear tear frank tears of the oh my gosh here we are sitting waiting for our shortstop for 6 or 8 weeks because he overloads and ends up with a tear of the calf muscle well we saw Lonnie Chisinau basically miss halves of two straight seasons with that injury now i'll say that francisco i think they're being cautious <clears throat> with him i don't think he's going to be out too long they're probably going to wait for the weather to warm up i think up the weather warm up too but kipnis you know, he's on the 10 day dl but who knows because that just happened last week we're going to see some guys out there the first week that uh, <laughs> all right we're going to have to check our program some pretty closely <laughs> that's right all right my friend good seeing you again we'll catch up with you next week so great being in thanks ray have a great week you too dr joe congeni akron children's hospital in studio